Look at this buck. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to the bullseye. A bush buck with a bow is so hard. <sighs> this is the biggest deer of my life. So big. Oh my God. I got wires. Oh. Easily my biggest white tail. What a ever. giant bull. Thanks, babe. No problem, babe. Hi guys, I'm Josh Bomer with Bomer Archery and today I'm going to share with you the best knot in archery. Literally the best knot that you need to learn how to tie because it can be used for anything. From tying in a peep sight to tying in an arrow holding placement for a D loop or even tying in a Bomer Archery nose button, even repairs. I mean there's so many options and so many uses for this knot. Let's get started on how to tie it in. That magical knot is called a constrictor knot. So I'm gonna use D-loop material here just for teaching purposes so you can kind of see the real detail of it. But 99% of all the knots uh, that you'll tie using the constrictor will actually be used with serving. So anyway, let's get started. So you're gonna drape this over the string like this. And then you'll wanna keep tension on the bottom part of this string. So I usually just kind of hold it like this. And then you're gonna to wanna to pass this side over that so you can kind of see how it's going over now if you don't hold on to this it'll spin out of control so you want to make sure you keep tension like this so what i do is i'll just kind of pass you can kind of see how i'm doing this with my knuckles and you want to wrap this over like this so again i'm just kind of holding so i'm going to do four just for you guys can see so now this is underneath here the loops are going over, so now you want to send this back under. So what I usually do is I'll actually loosen the knot up by twisting it towards me. And then I'll shove this all the way under like this. And work it through until it comes out the other side. And so then what you'll finish with is something that looks like this. So you'll want to spin that knot around so then there. The reason this knot is so helpful is because the tighter you pull this, the tighter the knot gets. So it's kind of nice because I could tighten this all the way down and I'd have to cut it off. Because Yeah, you can even see like it's already getting tight with, with me barely pulling it. I, I hope I can untie this. But because I want to show you guys some of the uses for this and the practical uses for this. But again, I'm going to run through that one more time. Okay, constrictor knot. What's also nice about this, you can do it a lot. So like a lot of loops. You know, one, two, keep tension, three... You could do four, you could go eight, 10, doesn't matter. Go all the way down and this knot will work amazing. So again, you wanna loosen the knot by rolling it back to you and then putting it back through all the way to the other side, just like this. And you wanna make sure none of these overlap each other. So you can kinda of see how this knot works actually really well. So if I kinda of loosen this up, you'll kind of see why this knot is so strong and so powerful. But that is what it looks like. That knot, I'm telling you, is incredible. So I'm going to show you some of the ways and, and reasons why you'd want to use this. So, for example, you can actually see from, let me get, try to get this untied, it's kind of a pain in the neck. Um, you can actually see where my D loop used to be. So I'll use this and tie on a D loop. So what you want to do when you set your D loop is actually use um, serving to kind of set where your arrow goes. So for example, say the arrow is going to go here, you can use this three this constrictor knot or three loop right underneath the D loop. So two, three, let's say we'll do four on the bottom. So you go right here, send that through. And I'll actually pull this tight. So what you want to do is kind of bring this around to where it's full. And so then I would tighten it like this. And then I would cut this, for example. Burn those, but just for sake of time, I will tie on the other side. Like this. So again, you're just kind of keeping tension. Whoops. And then here, you loosen it by rolling it back to you. Stay on that, this side of the knot. Okay, because you can see what happens is, see how that got overlapped? You want to make sure that that stays there. So there. 
that was a great example of what what can go wrong there. So say you were um, trying to tie on uh, a knot for your uh, for the D loop. This is a great example of how this can be used. So there, then your knock would go in between. Then you would tie on your D loop, for example, like this. And again, I'm just kind of breezing through this for you guys really fast, so you can kind of see. So then your your D loop would look like that. So then you would have this. So that knot, I use these underneath there all the time. Um, you could use this knot for this. You can do it for, let me just cut these real fast. Again, I'm using bigger serving than normal, just so you guys can see all of this. So I'm just gonna breeze through this. We'll speed this up. Okay. All right, so another thing you could do is use it for tying in a peep sight. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right here. So let's just do a normal. Again, I'm keeping tension here. One, two, three. You can see this is just going over this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So right here. So now I'm gonna to wanna to send this back through underneath. So I'm just going to kind of roll it towards me up here to create a gap. You could do this with a nail. You could wrap a nail around it so it's a little easier. I just don't take the time to put the nail in because it's honestly pretty easy. Okay, so then once you get all the way through, you want to make sure these are all lined up and not overlapping each other. So it looks like that. So you can slide that down right there and pull this tight. And there you can see I pulled, pulled that tight. It stayed tight. There you go. Cut out this. Burn this. It's a super clean clean knot and then you can put one obviously down here again this is just repetition to learn this knot so that's why I keep doing it over and over again again this constrictor knot is amazing so right here tension down the common mistakes actually are people will go on this side of it and then they wrap it over you got to go over the stationary string that's right here so you got to go over that so if I were to start down here so you guys can see over one and then two. You don't want a ton of tension because you need it to be able to move. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you get more than eight, you're going to want to put some sort of nail or something under there just for ease of use. There you go. And again, don't let these overlap. It'll give you a much cleaner look like that. So there you can see that is going to be beautiful. I slide this right up here and then I would pull that tight. Just like this. And so you a thousand percent can tie into D loop. And so what this will do, see how this still moves in the center. But as you shoot, what will happen is it will stop and stay in the center. So not an ideal way, but a lot of shops you'll see tie in their peeps this way. It actually does work pretty nicely. Um, I don't tie in my peeps. I'll actually put a link somewhere right in here to the way I tie in my peeps, which is pretty cool. But this does work in a tight, in a tight situation where you, know, you may need to do a repair or do something in the field. I always have serving on me and this is actually really great. So we've went over a couple ways to do this. Let's say you have a cable that's fraying or saying, or this is fraying and you don't, you're not in a position where you can get a string replacement. Again, you can do a repair and cover that up. Um, cable, I've done repairs with cables, like say for example, this starts unraveling. I had this happen to me in the field. Um, I'll go here. I had, it was actually on one of my yokes, this started unraveling. And so I did the constrictor knot, went over top the cable with it, protected it, it got me through the hunt. 
Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to tell you about this monster giveaway we're doing on our YouTube channel. We are giving away a six day, seven animal African safari hunt to one lucky subscriber. Literally a hunt of a lifetime, a true dream hunt on our dime. We're gonna give to one of you guys. We're even gonna cover travel costs. So make sure to enter. And to enter is pretty easy. All you gotta do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and comment on all of our most recent videos and, uh, and videos to come. When we hit 200,000 subscribers, we are going to pick that very lucky winner. So let's get back to this video. All right, this is actually how I tie in a nose button too, which is gonna be really cool. I'll show you guys how to do that. And I tie in above and below and on the nose button. Um, so there's lots of practice here to show you. All right, so again, droop it over like this. Keep tension on the string closest to you. And then this one will go over it. So it go like this. One, this one two, depending on the size of it, three, or you can actually fit five with the nose button. What's nice about the nose button is you, there's a slot right there for you just to slide it right under. So it's super fast. So then you just kind of pull this down. You, know, you want to make sure, see how this is getting crossed? You just want to roll that up, up there so it doesn't happen. And just take that. It's a really easy knot to do, honestly. And then look, and then you line it up where both of them are right down the slot. And a little nose button tip, you don't want to cinch this down right here because now you're going to have that gap facing you. So what I always do is I will roll this around, then I will line up a spike actually down the dead center of this. And then once I get that done, then I will, I'll tie it in like that and just pull nice and tight. And that nose button is not going anywhere. But because I am crazy and I like to make things um, super, super secure. What, I, what I'll do is, uh, let me grab this razor here, just cut this out of the way. So what I'll do is I'll go above and below too. So what you could do, again, wrap over like this. One, two, three, four. I'll do four typically on above and below. Then you roll it back towards you, put it under. I know you're like, oh my gosh. If I watch you tie one more knot, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, I know it's annoying, but guys, repetition is the mother of all skill. So I want to help you guys because this, this will make a big difference. So there, you just slide, slide that sucker right up against the nose button, pull it tight, do the same thing on the bottom, and you can start to see, like, there's so many things that you can do this with. It's awesome. And so there you guys have it. That is many ways, again, I would tie that again, but for sake of, of, of boarding you guys to death, I'm not gonna do both sides. But you get the idea. This is really, really a useful knot. You can use it anywhere, and it is definitely something you guys all should learn how to do. Well, guys, I hope you find that knot helpful, and I hope you use it all the time, because I know I do. Anyway, guys, if you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button, and right now is the best time to do that, because we are doing a huge giveaway. We are giving away a six-day, seven-animal African safari hunt to one of you lucky subscribers out there. We're even going to pay for travel, and we're going to pick that subscriber when we hit 200,000 subscribers. So again, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you're always tuned into our channel. And as always, Sarah and I appreciate your support.